Joining me today is professional quarterback Joey Bradley. Mr. Living for a Living is one of the most unique individuals I've ever met. He has utilized football to travel all around the world and is currently in Barcelona. We discuss that journey and how he has cultivated his own view of success rather than the societal views of success. His authenticity will be evident and the insights shared will surely assist anyone in any field. Thank you guys for tuning in and enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Flow Station Podcast. I'm your host, Will Ferris, and as always, the goal is to help you cultivate your unique flow by bringing on guests who have tapped into theirs. Speaking of someone who's tapped into theirs, I got my man, Joey Bradley, in the building today. Appreciate you coming on, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you being there. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not cutting this either. Yeah, yeah. We'll just let it. Hey, happy to be here, bro. Thank yes. you for having me on, man. Yeah, little do you guys know, we just uh, filmed this after the whole complete podcast. <laughs> this but... is the outro intro. <laughs> <laughs> And so you're from Issaquah, right? Yeah, yeah. I grew up same spot, same house. Issaquah, Issaquah High, High School. school oh, yep. cool. Yeah, yeah so. I went to Newport High School. Oh, all right, yeah, right so, on, man. What so. what year? 2014. Oh, okay. I'm a little older. Yeah, I'm yeah. nine. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And then you went to North Dakota to start yeah. out. I went to yeah junior college in Cali, and then North Dakota, and then uh, actually took a semester off. And then oh, University of New Haven is where I graduated and finished cool. up playing. So Yeah, that was like one thing I wanted to, to talk to you about is like you, everybody has questions about, you know, the levels of college sports. Yeah. And it, you know, you've went Division One, Division Two, <laughs> yeah. JUCO, and you play in Europe, bro, which right. I thought was super unique is – and not a lot of people know about that experience and that lifestyle. True. Um, so it'd be awesome to just get your take of like how, what that did for you as, as an athlete and as a human being to just go through all those different levels and, and trials. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's been a cool, like, I've really embraced the fact that I've had a really roundabout journey or path, yeah. you know, like not just the go to a four year for four years, graduate and out, you know, it's been moving, but like you said, a lot of adversity through it. Um, but just like the different level, like I always tell people this and maybe this surprises a lot. Like the best football I played was Juco. Like it was better than overall. Like in terms of you enjoyed it the most? In terms of level, in terms of like that California junior college football system is like serious. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I mean, and everyone, no one has a scholar there. So everyone's on that same level. Gotcha. Everyone wants to get the scholar, And so everyone's hungry as hell. Yeah, and there's some dudes who just don't like to do school <laughs> that can still play. Yeah, and so it's almost like this weird little like semi, you know, because once you get signed up for classes, you're good for the semester. Yeah. There's no class checks or anything yeah. like that. And so like some of the best running back I've ever played with, like ever, never did anything after JUCO because he didn't. He had to go to gotcha. work after practice, you know. So yeah. like it's just a. Uh, it's a funny thing like that junior college I remember that first kickoff my dad was at or the first game and the first kickoff I mean dude's running down with nothing to lose mm. and a lot to prove right and after the game my dad was like that's the loudest kickoff hits I've ever heard in my life really and like and then even going to play at North Dakota and we played uh, like Fresno State and Idaho were our big games and like I still from game one to game 10 I feel like that juco year was like the most competitive and like most challenging because there was there was talent everywhere yeah and and so you know flow is is kind of the main topic we we discuss on this you know podcast and one thing that stood out to me is like you have these guys who are so hungry and they don't have that scholarship and they have stuff to prove um how do you think that affected your flow when you feel like okay I want to get this scholarship, but how do you buffer it to where it's like, okay, it's not the main focus for me. It's not just like the only thing that's running that passion for the game. Yeah. I mean, although I'm, I might kind of disagree a little bit there because at yeah. that point, like, man, that's all everyone's thinking about is the scholarship. get a scholarly, mm. get D1 scholarly, you know, like that's everyone's thought like yeah. constantly going. And I've heard, you know, some junior college teams will – like become very selfish you know everyone's like mm-hmm. just i'm here for myself yeah because i want that scholarly and then uh, we luckily like came together and it was just like hey we're all in this together like if we go three and eight like yeah the top guys are going to get some scholars but if we go 10 and 0 then the bench guys are going to get scholars too that's dope and so i mean like we had a unique thing with my junior college where like that was like one of the best teams i've ever been a part of which 
That's crazy. most junior college dudes don't say that. Um, yeah. And if I opposite, uh, completely opposite. <laughs> yeah. And so like we had, you know, I don't know if it directly relates to flow, but there was like a definite like understanding between a majority of the team. You know, yeah. there's still individuals everywhere, but like a majority of the team was like, all right, we're going to do this together. That's cool. And so that way everyone's eating rather than just a couple guys and man like that was if i i always say if i could have like got my school paid for like by playing and gotten a four-year degree i would have loved to play juco four years in a really? row just because the dude that was granted it was first time out of the house living yeah. in the bay area yeah. you know i mean it was fun but just the the competition level and the like the hunger was like once you got d1 man there's some guys there that just i just want my school paid for Mm-hmm. and so i'm gonna ride this out and just yeah. make sure i don't get in trouble and but the passion wasn't as great yeah or juco man was it's just you're going hungry and and so once everyone and when we came to that collective uh flow i guess we could cut you know like just mindset which in a way is flow like hey we're gonna do this together and pff, i think we ended up like eight and three that year i played the year before we were three and eight so it was a good little turnaround. We had, mm. shoot, I had some dudes I was throwing to. We, I think off that team, you know, 20 dudes probably got scollies somewhere. Wow. You know, and so it was, it, it worked, you yeah. know, which was cool. Definitely. And now you're, you're playing professionally in Europe. And I, again, like, I don't think it's very, it's not discussed a lot. Or, no. or what is that experience like? Um, for you and and what what have you learned uh just being a part of different cultures and playing overseas yeah i mean and to just to be straight up like the term professional can be used very loosely like because depending on where you're going um and for the most part it's unknown but there's almost american football everywhere in the world to Mm -hmm. a certain degree um and in some places like it's pretty professional and everywhere like i'm still technically a professional but a lot of the places majority of the teams the domestic guys that are from there work you know or go to school and it's just kind of their hobby and so um it's been a like the main challenge for me being over there and it's like my livelihood you know Mm -hmm. I don't have another job I'm getting paid to play um but to balance kind of like expectations and understanding that like hey this is my livelihood but for 90 percent of the team this is just their hobby Mm. And so, like, sometimes you get frustrated because it's like, oh, he's missing practice for for what, you know? And But then at, to turn it around, like, those dudes who are doing it love the game because they don't have to. You know, they're not being forced to be there. They're not – it's not a job. It's strictly, like, a hobby. So the love for the game almost is, like, back to, like, a high school level where, you know, it's just some dudes who want to play – and think it like I was actually thinking about this the other day of like comparing it to, you know, like I'm sure we both have some boys who are super into like their softball leagues, you know, and like yeah. that's their extra correct, <laughs> extra correct curricular activity yeah. kind of thing outside of work. And these same guys playing football, that's their thing. Wow. And so like just think about some of our boys that get into softball. Like, there's that same seriousness, but it's just for a different sport, you know? Yeah. And for me, I mean, just the, like, I really like mingling and making new friends within the different cultures. And and I've been in Portugal and Poland mainly, which are, like, opposites in terms of culture, kind of. And so, but I got good friends from both sides and kind of you take a little yeah habit here and there and like i love coffee now because of or i love espresso now because of portugal and um yeah i don't know if i fully answered <laughs> what you were no, asking man. but that's that's cool to hear like so for you I'm, I'm assuming they expect a lot from you then bringing you in as an export for sure does that kind of that vibe with the whole team does that help you relax and p- perform better yeah and so that's a interesting question because like it, it depends on, I'd say, like, how much you're making. Mm. And so, for example, in Portugal, I, like, made ends meet, you know, just enough to cover, like, living, basically. But because of that, you know, the guys kind of just saw me as one of them a little bit more. Got you. Because, like, 
you know, I wasn't making, you know, I was, they were making more money than I was at their job, Got you. you know, but in Poland, then I was making good money for Poland, you know, the cost of living so different, but for my salary in Poland, it was really good, better than a lot of the guys that made just working on the team. Mm. And so there you kind of get looked at it as a little bit more of a commodity rather than a person, yeah. you know? And yeah. so like, and just to compare those two, like, I have a couple good friends from the Polish team, but then like I have a lot of boys from the Portuguese team. You know, it's like just a different way that you connect with people. Gotcha. And so like I've heard Germany's the top league over there, Germany and Austria. And from what I've I haven't played in either uh league, but from what I've heard from friends is that they don't have a ton of German friends when they leave. You know, it's you're viewed as a commodity. You're mm-hmm. viewed as someone there to go and win games and score touchdowns and you know make tackles rather than be a part of the culture for sure and and so that like I kind of realized that too in Finland this year I ended up just not I left before the season started um and I was expecting it to be like super professional and then it wasn't but then I still didn't really have that good vibe with some the whole team in general you know a couple again just a couple good friends um, that I kind of realized, like, I'm not doing this to like make money. And even at the biggest, yeah. even at the biggest contract, I'm not making very much, relatively speaking, coming back home that shit, I just want to enjoy the experience mm. and make homies. And, you know, the lifelong friendships are worth more than an extra hundred bucks a month. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. And that's something that's pretty unique about you, man. Like you, <laughs> you were talking before this you were you're doing a uh, podcast with Casey Williams and then you had to go deliver a pizza <laughs> yeah, so like yeah. <laughs> it just seems like you don't really care about you know where you're at standing wise in terms of you know I need to be here by this day or this year or this age of life yeah and you enjoy that process of becoming and experiencing life um so like on that path like what what do you value the most in terms of like you know do you view it as like a spiritual journey in terms of where you're learning different experiences about yourself deep more you know at a deeper level because you're not secured and bogged down to a job and staying in one place all the time yeah that's a good i i mean i've put a hmm, that's a good question um to start i guess like i made up my mind you know from transferring a bunch of times like i don't know who i heard say it but at some point in my career i heard someone say you know use football don't let football use you Mm. And that like stuck to me. And so because of college, you don't really get to travel. You know, I never traveled at all, like from zero to 24, 25 years old. And I really wanted to travel. And so I was like, screw it, man. I'm, I'd kind of planned on using football to get over there. Um, And then it ended up that first year in Portugal, which just kind of came honestly because of a lot of bad things led up to it. And like, it was kind of the the uh, sunshine at the new day, mm. kind of like I really needed it. And it turned into like one of the greatest experiences so far in my life, like with the friends I've made from Portugal, the other American dude on the team. Um, just Portugal in general is one of the most amazing countries to me. Um, and so after that, I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I want to I keep doing this. Yeah. And then combined with the fact that like I don't have a like a huge – desire to be like rich and success Mm. you know successful in the sense of like wealth you know um and I think from a young age I kind of saw um some people in my family that are very wealthy Mm. not be super happy that's deep and so I you know like as I examine it now as I get older I'm like you know I might have I almost maybe equate in my mind like a certain degree of money equals unhappiness, you know, like that's Mm. almost maybe how I kind of have it wired up in my head, you know? Um, and so I just kind of like made the decision, like, I'm just going to do me and do what I want to do. Like the big reason I like doing it is like, I don't really have a boss, you know, like there's not a lot of like things I have to do. You know, I try Mm -hmm. and like everything I'm doing, I want to do. And then, you know, but it comes with some consequences. And like when I'm back home, 
I'm staying at my mom's. I was here for three months this summer, which is like the longest off season I've had. I normally break it up with some traveling and stuff, but just didn't work out this year. And so, yeah, I'll like stay with my mom for, you know, a week to a month or so and then deliver some pizza <laughs> just to get a little pocket money, which although I should say delivering pizza is like one of the best gigs at least at least in the Sammamish plateau area the, the tips are the great tips are there crazy. oh bro what <laughs> and uh and so i kind of and i i kind of like the like mm, like don't judge a book by its cut like i kind of like that weird like i don't give a shit what yeah. anyone thinks like yeah i'm 29 and we'll deliver some pizza every now and then but then also if you talk to me in six months, I'm living in Barcelona playing American football, you know? So yeah. it's like, depending on what time of the year you talk to me, <laughs> you either think I'm a super loser or like got the best life in the world, you know? And either one's probably right, you yeah. know, but who am I to judge? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. So, you know, I've, I've kind of had that, that process in myself, you yeah. know, and in, and in my, you know, who career a little bit and, and transitioning on to some different things and trying to figure out what I'm passionate about and, and knowing that money is not the, you know, the happiness for me either. Right. Um, and I feel like I kind of experienced that playing on a full ride. Yeah. And you yeah. kind of get that sense, like man, you got everything taken care of and you're still not fully happy and like you're living that dream. Totally. So I don't think I've equated to a, you know, millions of dollars, but I still feel like I got that taste. Yeah. And knew like, okay, that's not that's not really gonna be enough for me to fulfill me. So I know you're pretty big into mental health as well. Is yeah. there like some things that, you know, on your path that you found is like, okay, this is what does equate to happiness for me, or this is a, a way that I can get into that mindful space where, you know, I'm happy regardless of, you know, what it looks like externally or, or what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, and it's been a, you know, a, a journey. Cause like I said, even getting to Portugal in the, first stage like was essentially a result from like being in a very dark place yeah um like that's just, your first year yeah that was my Got first you. year so i just like quick backstory is i graduated moved back home uh you know was working a really crappy job you know the whole like get a degree and you get a good job thing that we're you know lied yeah. about <laughs> you know like i am come back and i'm interviewing for some jobs and i knew i was going to go play football in europe like but most of the other seasons start in like six, seven months from yeah. this time point in time. And so I'm like, I'll get a, let me see what the job market's like and go to like two, three interviews, no calls back, no nothing. You know, I didn't even get a call back for like bussing tables at a restaurant or something. And I'm yeah. like, man, this system, what, you know? Yeah, what just and, happened? And yeah, <laughs> and like, this was a lie, bro. I got yeah. hooked. And so I ended up working just a crappy job and amongst that kind of had a failing relationship happening. And those things essentially just like kind of yeah, came to a game. head. And like the day I'd say like it shit really hit the fan. Like I got the message from the Portuguese team mm. and it was like, you can leave in like a month or a month and a half and everything else would be like six, seven months away. And I was like, yep. When's the flight? You know, like let's, I need to get out of my current situation. I just knew in my head, like I wasn't mm. myself, you know, and I needed to get out of that. And so, you know, to kind of go back to your one, it, it has been somewhat of a spiritual journey, even if I didn't realize it at the time, you yeah. know. Um, but now, like, I feel, you know, in the last maybe two year, year and a half, two years, I've kind of gotten much more into meditation. And mm. um, I've always been like a big believer in the universe and frequencies and vibrations and thoughts or things and, you know, all of that stuff. Um and so I know like for myself and it's like, I'm glad I'm saying this because I tend to sometimes get out of this habit. Mm. But if I start my day with 10, 15 minutes of meditation and then I'll do like a little, I don't know what the best way to call it is, like a gratitude prayer kind of thing Yeah. where I'm just essentially like saying, you know, I'm talking to myself in my head saying thank you to the universe and everything for everything that's happening and then I normally try and pick a couple people out and just send good vibes to them that's awesome and dude if I start with that yeah like I can't lose the day mm. almost you know like yeah because it just gets you in that that right frequency and 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 but in the same sense like I didn't do it this morning you know yeah, yeah. You, you know like 
but I know. I don't think that's necessarily like what it has to be, though. It doesn't have to be like another compulsive, like, oh, I, sh- I didn't do it today, so I'm not going to be in a good space. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. But then I know when I'll get into little ruts or like mm. when I'm getting down, like I specifically will think like, shit, I didn't meditate. I didn't yeah. do this today. And I know I'm feeling, you know, and I know my thoughts are my, I'm storytelling in my head and I'm just going that yeah. downward spiral. Yeah. But I know I can fix it. Yeah. But I didn't, you know, and That's so it's deep. like, it's just catching yourself. And like, for me, I'm a big, like the meditation's huge for me because I'm constantly got a story going in my for mind, sure. you know, whether it's real or <laughs> not, I mean, yeah, you we know, all we, do, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, meditation really lets you kind of clue into like when it's getting off track, yeah. you know, you know, and, um, so I can like, just now I'm starting to get aware of like, oh, I didn't meditate this morning. My, my thoughts are getting a little out of control. Yeah. Like chill, you know, mm. like even if I don't go and meditate, like at least I'm aware that why the thoughts are spinning like they are, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. That's a, that's a very deep insight, bro. Because for me, it's, I, I started doing, um, I don't do this as consistently, but I try to do an hour in the morning, no Damn. food, no, uh, no like technology. Okay. It's just, it didn't okay, really yeah. matter what yeah. I was doing. It wasn't like meditation. I, I tried to not make it something I had to do, Yeah. but just like, okay, I'm going to take care of myself. And I and figured, like, what do you normally do in that space? Um, like I would wake up and, and make my bed or, okay. or put my clothes away, which is, or some things that I wouldn't do if I went up and looked at my phone For and sure. I was like, okay, I'm not like really nourishing myself anymore. Right. You know, I'm not taking care of the things that I know would serve me mentally. Um, so it, it was that or, or go read a book or, or yeah. you know, cook breakfast. Yeah. It didn't, it, you know, it didn't have to be something that was like I was dialed into. And when I noted it, it was like throughout the day, then I'd be very aware of like, okay, wow, man, I am on my phone a lot or I do check this a lot. And it wasn't like a negative, uh, uh, you know, uh, oh, I got to stop. It's just more, wow, okay, you're oh. aware of it now you don't have to be ran by it. Um, but one thing is like, as you were speaking, you know, for me, uh, meditation, especially sometimes actually takes me down, you know, more of a dark path because it's like, I'm trying to attain a state. I'm trying to do something with it. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if you have those similar experiences, you know, like, okay, I got to just be, right. I got to find that space where I'm just being. And even if I am in this, like, I'm not trying to fix anything. I'm not trying to go into it with this goal that I think a lot of people, and especially myself, when I started, I go in like, oh, I, I got to fix something or, or my thoughts are out of whack. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you, have you experienced that too? Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Like you, you initially start, or I think most, a lot of people start because it's like, there's a goal in right. mind, you know? Exactly. And, and I think that's good to start, you yeah. know, that, like let's, <laughs> let's, it'll fix your problem, yeah. you know? But then you kind of realize like, nothing's going to get solved per se, you know, everything's just going to get a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, I, um, I, yeah, because dude, I like, I definitely guilty of having dark thoughts, you know, and, and, um, but like I said, is for me, the medit, like meditation helps me in terms of realizing that they're not the, they're dark, but like, they're not, yeah real you know yeah. and and um but th- another thing that i've kind of been just coming to accept is like dude it's okay to not be okay yeah you know like not if you look at instagram you know like nice. and that's that's a big problem that yeah. we're having and that's like a thing that i was so stoked about this is like yeah. just talking about real shit and right. how we feel and like yeah you know instagram's just highlight tapes essentially i've kind of tried to turn it into like a diary where i'm still 90% of my stuff is positive, but then 10% will be, Hey, I'm struggling or, you know, yeah. going through something like yeah. that, you know, not positive, not a highlight, a low light per se. For sure. And, um, but for me, like the, the, like just kind of realizing like, okay, I don't feel that good right now. Mm-hmm. And that's all right. Like that's yeah. part of being human Yeah, is, been the biggest thing where like in the past I would do the same where I'm like I'm trying to fix you know like yeah whatever it may be I want to fix it yeah but now it's like shit sometimes you just got to have a bad week yeah. and if you can stay 
typically my bad weeks though then tend to be when I'm not meditating. You know, I'm not right. in my little routine, but that's okay too. Cause then at the end of it, I don't know, you're gaining understanding that this routine helps. It does. You know, there's yeah. a, there's a reason kind of for everything in the, the hippie saying, world, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I think that's another great insight because it's, Instagram to me, if I'm not careful, becomes just like little advertisements to my brain. Totally. Like, oh, you, you should be doing this. You should be having this by now. You should be doing this. For Instead sure. of just feeling like blessed where I'm at and, and doing what I'm doing. Um, but you hit it on the head. Like this, the whole idea for this podcast was, you know, I was an athlete that yeah. went through a lot of stuff that wasn't discussed at all. Yeah. You know, and totally. if you were to discuss it, you felt like I'm going to lose my edge yeah. or, or I don't want to tell my coaches because – or somebody yeah, thinks you're soft or yeah right yeah. and and i think it's it's cool you know even just having guys on that are just, yeah man i meditate and you know that's okay like you can <laughs> yeah. you can spend time to nourish like your mind and body to a level that it's like yeah man i deal with these type of things and everyone does um but let's i mean i feel like we can tap even deeper in on meditation too like for sure. um for me you know that you know, I think as athletes, we do set those goals pretty heavily. Like, we're right. like, okay, I want to tap into this goal. You know, I'm coming in this meditation. So for you, like maybe give an individual practice. Like today, I'll give you an example. I'm yeah. sitting in that chair you're sitting in. Okay. And I was just here. I didn't set a timer. And I was like, you know, I'm not feeling great. I'm not feeling 100%. You know, I got this interview coming up. Yep. I want to be present for it. Um, so I sat there just for 30 minutes. The first probably 25 um, were just wrestling. Yeah. And then finally the last five, I just let go. I'm like, stop trying to fix something, man. Yeah. Just be <laughs> like, it'll, it'll soon pass if you stop fighting it. Right. Um, so that's kind of just an inner example. And your eyes me. are closed. Yeah. Or, just okay, just yeah, eyes closed, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. have, have the lights off yeah. and, and just not trying to follow my breath, not trying to like attain something. Yeah. But I think it's funny. We, we don't realize how much we are trying to attain something or shift something. Um, and when you get past that sense of feeling that need, I think it, that's when, you know, the real fireworks take off in Hell yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just tap into that experience a little more for you. Yeah, I mean, my typical is I I normally do set a timer for 10, 15 minutes just yeah. because, like, if yeah. I get lost, then <laughs> sometimes I'll – if I don't, it's like two minutes and I feel like, uh, yeah, I gotta, yeah, yeah. you know, it kind of gives me that goal <laughs> we're sure. talking about, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, 10, 15 minutes or shoot, you know, sometimes if I get early to like, for example, if I would have gotten been super early to this and have five minutes to kill mm. in the car rather than walking in here, sitting in the lobby, like scrolling on Instagram, like I just sit in my car, just take everything it. off, set a timer for five minutes or whatever. And, you know, because yeah. even at the short frames, I think it can help. Yeah. And so for me, though, I just, you know, set the timer, prefer a darker room. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily get cross-legged and, you know, <laughs> yeah. like do this whole thing. You know, yeah. I, I kind of, I have like a little hand plate, you know, mm. sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. And then just, uh, you know, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And tr I try and, and I got this from my buddy is, and he did the, uh, like the, 10 day retreat in mm. California where you don't talk, you don't, you can't Jeez, look at anybody, yeah. you know, it's like he went through that. And so some of my stuff I've kind of gotten yeah. from him. And so we'd meditate together in the car together when we were living uh, together. And I noticed that like my, I'd breathe super loud mm. and he didn't, I couldn't even hear him breathe. Like I almost thought he was dead. And so I was like, bro, you don't breathe very loud. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I feel like if I'm super quiet then it makes me focus even more on my breath and like that's you know kind of one avenue of meditation and so now I kind of stole that from him and so like I breathe in through my mouth in through my nose out through my mouth but try and be as quiet as I possibly I like can yeah and you know I think it kind of has multiple things with one like it really makes you think about breathing in silently and breathing out silently so your mind is focused on the breath and then it's just kind of like this like weird like I don't know you're you're just a part of wherever you are you That's know deep. like you're not you're just in it you know you're not affecting anything in any way kind of you know in a yeah. hippie kind of yeah. you know like very zen like quality kind of yeah and so that's just kind of my and just 
in in through the nose out through the mouth and then in my mind I'll picture a couple things kind of like you know thoughts are coming and I try and at least like let the thought mm. be and like think through whatever the thought is like and then let it go and so and by the way I let it go is I'll either I kind of envision like blue sky blue sky with clouds rolling by and like that thought will just like get into the clouds and keep rolling you know or uh like I'll like sometimes like I kind of almost as I'm breathing out feel like I'm breathing like smoke out and the thoughts are in the smoke that just like rise up and so I kind of you know will shift between those two things yeah and but like being aware of whatever the thought is letting it kind of finalize even no matter how big or little or small because sometimes those thoughts that you have in meditation like are next level you know and Mm -hmm. like if you just in the beginning i'd always be oh i can't think anything and so as soon as a thought would come up i'd oh no 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 forget it but now like i've kind of let it build a little bit get aware of it and then like all right yeah you're you're out of here yeah yeah, like exactly now we're back to clear you know and because it's tough for us the whole athlete goal centered like you're never gonna win yeah that's deep like you're not gonna win no one there's no meditation (laughs) contests you know like nobody's the best yeah like maybe scientifically they can tune in and look at brain scans and stuff but yeah but but at the same time (laughs) there's no right now we can't go on wikipedia and find the best meditator you know yeah and so like shit that was that was totally new i'd never Uh, said that never even thought about that yeah and so like as I say that right there, it's like I'm not competing against yeah. anybody or even my. You know, we always compete against ourselves, really. But you, know, yeah. you can't even compete against yourself in that. You yeah, know, you just got to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even as you were talking, I was trying to do that. You know, just quiet breath, and it did ground me, bro. Bro, it it, it makes does. you really think. It slows yeah. you down a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's. That's the one thing about meditation too. There's doesn't have to be a certain way. Like everybody's gonna meditate a little bit differently you don't need an app all the time you don't need a no. book to tell you how to do it like you get sometimes you just got to do it and yeah. see how it how it affects you yeah so for how, me oh yeah no, go ahead yeah. uh what like got you into it like what was the thing <sighs> that's that, deep bro. yeah yeah i figured there's a good yeah man uh i've been in the rabbit hole of meditation for a while so okay. in high school i always dealt with a little bit of anxiety just kind of i didn't even know it was anxiety it was right. just kind of there I'm like always like whoa you know, but I didn't know how to verbalize it to anyone. And this one teacher came in for like five minutes, turned off all the lights and had us meditate. Uh, I think it was like my junior year of high school and it stuck with me. I was like, that was unique. You know, I felt like we never, and at a deep level, I always felt kind of hurt by the system of, of school. Like I felt like, man, they don't really want us to be free. Like they, they tell us like, <laughs> yeah. you know, your weekend is when you can be free and you know, during the week, you're ours. And, and I don't know, that's how I perceived it. Like, I remember getting a red card in fourth grade. You know, I did something bad. I don't know what I did. Probably threw a marker or something. <laughs> and, like, she's like, yeah, you're going to have to do this and this. And I remember eating pasta at home. And I was like, she's not going to take away this moment for me eating this pasta and enjoying it. And so, like, I, at a deep level, I knew I was like, I don't know. I, I always felt wrestled with this idea that, like, there's something I have to do tomorrow and I can't enjoy the present. Ah. And you know, when I had that five minute meditation, I was like, okay, there's something else we can do that is beyond the do, do, do work, work, work. Hell yeah. So when I got to Eastern Washington, still experienced that experiencing, you know, that anxiety probably at a deeper level and still couldn't verbalize it. I wasn't going to go tell someone I was like, I'm just feeling this way. Right. I thought it was like, Oh, I got to eat better. But I started (laughs) tapping into meditation, still was doing it, still was, you know, working on it. Then when I got it to Azusa Pacific, I transferred. Okay. Um, I go there. Uh, I started doing this practice in the morning where I would just like envision. I would draw the room in my mind. Okay. And try to be as present as possible. Like draw the location as to where I was and put myself in it. Lastly, oh, you know, sick. like okay, like so I'm I'm here. I'm, I'm I'm not at the center. Like I'm just this is what's occurring. Yeah. Um, so I started doing that. I started meditating a lot and, you know, at the beach, I would just sometimes just go by myself and yeah. just try to tap in. Yeah. And then this That's last like my year, my favorite place, I think to meditate. Oh, the for beach. sure. Yeah. You oh, just yeah. take in all, all this different stuff. Yeah. But then I, 
um, you know, my last year I was just doing a grad program online uh, and I, and I kind of knew I wasn't going to finish it. So I was like, okay, I'll BS my way through this and I'm going to study meditation full on. There was like a Buddhist temple right near the school. Oh, I was dang, going to that bro. on the weekends and trying to learn and take that in, but still just absolutely sucked at it. Cause my goal was to like, Oh, I want to feel better. Yeah. 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 And so I started studying, you know, atheists, Christians, Buddha, Buddhists, like, you know, monks, like how did they meditate? What are some all the top mindfulness guys, I was just, I have notebooks of just what I've studied, those talks I've listened to. Damn. Um, so I got deep into it, you know, I was meditating an hour, two hours a day and noticed like on the court, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't always translated, you know, cause <laughs> okay. I would, like I said, you know, it would take me down some paths that I wanted to control or fight uh, force. Yeah. And I didn't have a buffer. I was like, okay, shit, I'm stuck in this today. You know, I'm very, very aware of what's going on but I can't, I can't break free. So I think it's just been something that I've wrestled with and studied for a long time That's and, cool. uh, don't always have the best answer. You know, yeah. sometimes I'll, I'll tap in so deeply, like, okay, I'll just do that again next time. And then next time it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's shit, it's, it's shitty in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. so I think, you know, really reframing it and knowing like, okay, you're okay. And like you said, there is no winner. Right. One of the, the coolest books that shifted my view on meditation was Zen mind, beginner mind. And uh, he's like, don't go in thinking you're the best horse or the worst horse, just be. And for me, that was always so hard, you know, like, fuck, you know, how do I just be? Yeah. You know, if I feel like something's wrong, how do I not fix it? Um, So the wording in Zen mind, beginner mind is pretty crazy, too. I mean, (laughs) it's crazy, bro. That's it's great. That's what the first book I read on it was as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, that's a great book for anyone that's like trying to start in, yeah. a, in a in a way that I think I wouldn't say good or bad, but a way that's like, this isn't going to, you know, you don't want to have that goal. You yeah. don't want to have yeah. that outcome because if you do, then you're kind of fighting the, the storm a yeah. little bit. Um, and so I don't know, that's been kind of, I know that's a kind of a long story, but no, that's, that's, cool. that's why I really tapped into it. And that's why I'm always curious as to everybody else's meditation and, right. and seeing like, okay, what well, works for you? Or what are some ways? And it doesn't always have to be this, like, I get rid of thoughts and, like, I'm, I'm free of thoughts. It's like some days you might not feel great. Right. Some days you get up and it's like, okay, at least I'm letting things be. Um, sometimes I'll do, like, a you t- you alluded to it, like, oh, I'll send some vibes out to mm-hmm. some people. Mm-hmm. For me, it kind of gets me out of my own way. Like, bless the people that you, you, you love. And then I remember I did this one in a guided, and it was like, all right. And then bless yourself at the end. Totally. I just started like crying. I was like, damn, man, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm not a great dude or I'm not present, but I'm really am trying. And yeah. I think that's yeah. the kind of like a good way to put it is like, don't judge the outcome and yeah. just be. So that's, yeah, sick. that's kind of like the, been my journey with meditation. That's, that's cool, man. Yeah. Like it's when you said Zen mind, beginner mind, yeah. I think I read like a, the Phil Jackson book or yeah. something. And that was like his, bro. his main <laughs> yeah. recommendation. I was like, Phil's saying it. I gotta, yeah. I gotta do it. And then my other book that I like, I'd say Zen Mind, Beginner Mind got me even just to think about it. Yeah. And then the one that like really got me to do it is Ten uh, Percent Happier by. Uh, it, dang. Um, I know what you're talking about. Um, I'm. I always say he's a. He used Her- to be a, Harris. Is his last name Harris? Yeah, Matt Harris, maybe or. <laughs> I, I don't know. I know. Yeah. I know you're talking about though. Ten, he, he, was a you know a, a famous like journalist or yeah. like TV journalist kind of guy and like his just life story of how he went through with everything was like all right I guess I'll try this too then for sure and, and so but that's I like the um the the thought of like blessing everyone then blessing yourself that's a yeah because it puts you in that right yeah frame of mind completely and I've I've also like I haven't done it much but just experimented with like. I don't know what the exact style is, but where you just like repetitively say the same thing over mm. and over in your head. Like a mantra or something. Yeah, like a mantra, yeah. like chant kind of, you know, I'm saying it in my head, not out loud. Um, and I'll, I think I'll try and do that for like two minutes or three minutes or, mm. five, you know, maybe max like five. Yeah. And it's crazy just like how difficult it is. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, one, you only have to think one thing, yeah. but to just continually think the same thought for, for sure. X amount of minutes, you know, yeah. and, and so I've, I've messed around a little bit with that, which now that I'm saying it out loud, I liked it. I just, 
don't do it as much as I should or yeah. I feel maybe because it's like we learn so much about it and it's almost like oh I want to apply this and that and it does become like a task yeah but one, one thing I, I did try that you know I I'm fluent in Spanish so oh, okay sick sometimes I'll just uh I'll count to 100 in Spanish okay. just to start it off like okay can I focus on this to 100 and, okay you know, yeah doing it in a language that I don't normally speak it kind of ships things for me hell yeah um so like yeah i think that's another good one just to kind of test your mind out a little bit but like i mean like we both said it's unique to everyone and it doesn't have to be what we're saying it doesn't have to be you know what your book is saying but for sure just something to reground you in, into being i think is huge because we get so caught up in in everything we do for um, sure but yeah dude so i started doing a little bit of qigong as well I'm, you ever heard I'm of not that? familiar no it's uh this has been another thing I've, I've kind of tapped into in meditation is like i feel like i'm always if my meditation's expending energy then i'm kind of not doing it in the right way okay and qigong's practice i was shown i don't know if you know jordan hamilton, jordan hamilton. uh he sure hooped at lehigh he he's kind of in that in the you know the washington circle I'm okay sure. yeah I'll, I'll link you to him he's a, he's right, a dope word. guy okay cool he uh he took me after an open gym we did some qigong it's like this you're basically just like holding an energy ball okay and uh you're just gathering energy you're not expending it you're trying to just maintain it and hold it um so you're doing a bunch of movements and, and different things and uh you know it was crazy man like you you start to sense like how much energy you're wasting and how much energy you're actually gathering so how how, how can we maintain energy to be with and i uh we went to taiwan last summer with my team and i had like five guys out there doing it and uh, we're sending up like gratitude blessings. We'd link the balls together and you feel it, bro. Like everyone has their ball, they're doing the practice and then we all link at the end. And it was like one of the coolest ways to get the guys together doing oh, some weird stuff. Sick. Everyone already thought I was the weirdest guy <laughs> on the squad, but I was like, screw it, man. And you know, surely like a couple guys were like, man, that was cool, man. And so I think I gotta, everyone- I'm gonna look this up for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's dope, dude. And I, so I started doing it with my dad um, and it, it really opened a gateway to just talk deeper with people that you love okay and so what i always do at the end is like once we gather the ball is like send up something we're super grateful for together and we'll say it out loud and you know for me it was like just, i'm just grateful that you know i'm living with my pops i'm like just grateful that he's housing me and allowing yeah. me to do things that i love you know for him to hear that in a you know i'm not going to say that just normal for sure it's just, it's, it's difficult for sure. yeah. but you know for me to be able to go up to him and say that face to face um was cool and then he says something you know of gratitude and we, and we lift it up to the heavens and just let it go and hit the smile on his face dude i'll never forget it was like the craziest thing and i was like i don't think i was as tuned in as he was but he was like oh shit <laughs> and it sounds crazy man but dude yeah, no, I'm, I'm with it that's it, it's that's... an interesting practice so i've done it on the beach with a couple of buddies and and you know the waves feel like they're moving to your to your flow your energy chi gone chi gone chi yeah. gone okay um, and so it really like open to me energy is real Hell yeah. you know it's coming off certain things and i think at a deep level i knew that i knew that you know i, I deeply believe we have a spirit and a soul For sure, i just yeah. don't think i embodied it i don't think i was like okay this is real i can trust it yeah i know that it's there so i don't know if that's something that you've yeah. felt too on your journey like man this stuff is real yeah and we can trust it dude and you like setting it up kind of with taiwan <laughs> and have you been anywhere else in asia or anything? oh like, my god i want to yeah i and, have not though okay and so like when you brought all that it just reminds i went to nepal okay um, about a year ago for a month last last fall for a month yeah and uh, with a, a buddy that um nepalese dude who's like one of my best friends now i just randomly met him my second year in lisbon um and i explained like and I wonder if you felt the same thing in Taiwan too, but like in, and I'm just blanket statement of in Asia, mm -hmm. but I was in Nepal and Thailand in my month and a half. Um, like to me over there, everyone believes in mm. energy or yeah. a much higher percentage than like here. Chi. Yeah. Like chi, like energy, some... karma. Yeah. You know, like it was funny, you know, you said like, like it's, I realize that this energy is a real thing, you know, and yeah. it's like, I'm saying that people believe in it. Like it's yeah. a, a religion yeah. or so, you know, like yeah. it's a theology Yeah. when in reality, it's like a scientifically proven thing, yeah. you know, vibrations, frequencies, et cetera. 
And so over there, I feel, you know, just for a sake of using a number, like four out of five people believe in it over mm. there. Whereas back here in the States or the Western it's world. Like voodoo. Yeah, it's maybe like one out of five yeah. believe in it, you know, just to use a number. But since everyone believe or a higher percentage of people believe it over there, the power of it is like an mm. exponentially greater. And so like, you know, for if over here, like, say me and you believe in it honestly but then i don't know the other 10 guys in this office building don't like our limit of vibration is only so hard so high because we are affected by theirs slightly but if you go somewhere where everyone's believing in it it heightens it and so like dude i mean and these are like stupid little examples kind of but i kind of take them for realness you know and and so like my thoughts were like extremely more powerful while I was over there. And like the first thing was I'd been in, um, I'd been at my brother's house uh, before I left and he lives down in LA and he was trying to give me some money to like take with me and trying to give me some clothes and stuff. I went just with a backpack and that was it. And I was like, bro, I don't need, I don't need the extra money. You know, like I don't, what if I lose my wallet? You know, like what if, you know, I don't, I don't need it. You know, what if I, and we probably had that conversation like four or five times over the course of the week before I left. Mm-hmm. Day three in Nepal, I lo- lost my wallet. Oh, shit. And luckily, I don't have any, you know, maybe 100 bucks cash, you yeah. know. Luckily, I'm with my boy and his family. And so we ended up, it, it all worked out completely yeah. fine. But then a couple other things like, you know, on that trip, I lost like, a neck pillow, a hat, <laughs> and a book. or And all Not things neck were, pillow. Yeah, all, but all <laughs> things were like, outside of my backpack and kind of causing me hassle uh-huh. and so at certain points in time like i'd really be like i should not have brought in it. like i don't need it why'd i bring this and then like literally the next day that thing would get lost or left or <laughs> something and then um kind of make a long story longer um <laughs> <laughs> like when i got to thailand you know all my friends back home are asking me how's nepal how's this and i said it was so cool because i got to experience it with a local and in nepal it's very like tourist or gotcha local there's like very little like in between yeah and so like i had a truly like eating home cooked meals 90 percent of the time you know like a very unique experience Mm -hmm. which i got coming out on the vlog soon i'm giving myself a little plug and uh living for living living for living baby (laughs) yeah and uh and um so people are asking me what I basically I said, you know, just being in one of the locals was so cool. And on my first night in Thailand, we stayed at kind of a local area in Bangkok called uh, Koh Kret, which amazing little teeny little island. And again, long story longer, ended up partying with the local guys in that little island from like 9 p.m. to like 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. You know, went to the the bar is like yeah we'll have a beer you know and then by the end of it they're showing me around the entire you know we're drunk as hell showing me around the entire island oh yeah we used to live here and we used to do that (laughs) and like i was one of their boys and now on facebook you know we still talk and you know hey if you ever want to come back you don't need to stay at a hotel you know stay with me (laughs) you know and so like it was just like dang like the one thing i constantly was saying is i really enjoyed the local experience and then first time in the new country what do I get? I get that local experience. So that's like how I explain that the vibes over there or the frequencies or whatever you want to call it, yeah. the energy, like is that a heightened place where if you're tuned into it, it yeah, it tunes into you. you know? Yeah, and you got to be open to it. For sure. Because I think my biggest insight from Taiwan is that's when I was really trying to be grounded and, and find space. So we were playing in this big tournament. Um, it was awesome. Like it seemed like, you know, all of Taiwan wanted to be a part of it. It was like parades and, you know, we were holding babies. We were, you know, <laughs> like sick. autograph and everything. I was like, they felt like we were like in the NBA and there's some D2 college team. But, uh, you know, it was it was an awesome experience. But I, one of the biggest insights, like you said, was um, I think I was expending more energy trying to be present or, or I was expending too much energy just trying to be grounded if that Uh, makes sense yeah i was like seeking like okay i need to go do this to be grounded or or be be present or whatever you know i think that's and to round up you know meditation and our experiences in these different things it's like 
it doesn't have to be a fight. It doesn't have to be something you go try to do. But when you feel called to it, it's like just release into it and things will come to you. Kind of like what you were saying. Yeah. And, and you'll get those experiences and those insights that, you know, you might need. Yeah. I mean, it, well, and that's a dude, there's such thing as like trying too hard. Right. You know, like I forget in, you know, like as a quarterback, like throwing. Yeah. Like if I really and I'm sure shooting and for sure, like when you're like really like mm-hmm. I'm going to. You know, and like you're trying so hard, then and you're trying to be perfect essentially, yeah. then you're not it's, in the right flow. You know, you're right. not in that right space, and yeah. you're not just letting it happen. Where yeah. and I, ex- I was uh, explained that to like a Portuguese coach or something. Was like, oh, I was trying to be too perfect today. He's like, Isn't that like the goal? I go, Kind of, but when you're yeah. trying too hard, then it you end up being your own enemy in a way, right? You know, and so finding that kind of balance essentially yeah i brought on um isaac dotson i don't know if you know him he yeah I, with Tim. yeah I, I i don't know if we like we're not boys or anything but yeah. i'm sure we've met throughout the years yeah that was like our biggest conversation was you know the practice you tap in so deeply and then you get to release in the game it's just kind of letting it go for sure um and i almost Kaysen like said the exact same thing right too, yeah. it, it's it's so funny that we we get into the game and we worry more it's like okay why did i just practice so much <laughs> yeah and and for me it's like i was i was the king of that like oh, oh i get to the game like i got to do this 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 and it's like bro just calm down like you've shot enough shots yeah just let it all out right. um and you know as as we're talking i kind of feel like it's the same with meditation right it's like we've spent our time in that practice now it's like when i'm with you yeah. Just let it go. I don't yeah. have to try to be present. I don't have to try to like fend off thoughts. It's just be aware, be be in the moment. You've practiced for it. Let it go. So I think that's like a cool, it's like a cool trend. Like, you know, I bring on athletes because I feel like we're we're aware of certain things. Yeah. But it can be applied to everything else in life, you know, as, totally. you're, as you're going through, you know, a different job or, you know, you're delivering a pizza. You're trying to get Dude. there on time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to yeah. be in flow, bro. You got to hit those lights. Or even like <laughs> I've I've realized now that I've gotten into like the editing film, like yeah. videography kind of world, like like up until then, you know, the only true like flow or like getting in the zone, you know, that's yeah. how I kind of would equate it, you know, is when yeah. you're in the zone, you lose track of time, all For that, sure. you know, it, I'd only really experienced it in sports mm. or like in the gym with editing videos like now i find myself sometimes getting in the yeah, flow where like exactly an hour and a half passes and just everything lines up and just clicks into the yeah. same spot but then to go on what you said like some days i'll be like all right i really want to make something dope mm-hmm. and i'll you know i'm not in i'm really trying you know yeah. and i get in and ah, you get frustrated and mm-hmm. oh, what, uh, why won't this just go together you know and whereas before the day before or whatever like things just happened effortlessly yeah and so just kind of seeing it's been i've enjoyed it like the editing portion of my life now because it's nice to have that other thing that you experience this flow in because i think you only really experience it in things you enjoy that's deep i you know i don't i don't know i haven't i haven't thought too much about what i just said right there but it's tough to get into flow for something you don't enjoy i think you know maybe i don't know I don't know. It's it's some, you know, guys in this office, you know, ask me, like, how do I tap into flow here? Yeah. And it's like, okay, I can try to assist you in the things that I know, but I don't know if you really like it or enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. That's so that's a good point. You know, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, either. I haven't, yeah, I, that, I normally try and think quite a bit about what I'm going to say, but I'd never really, that's hasn't. You definitely got to have a, a, a laser like attention. Yeah. On what there has doing. to be an interest, like a definite interest. And that's why it's like, um, I try to put my phone away in certain cir- circumstances like for sure bro that's that's a killer flow i've i've written that down oh. like a hundred times in in my you know my notebooks my flows i'm like dude this phone is killing your flow and i'll get back to it i'll go look at it i know it's taking me out but i'll still do it and so it's no <laughs> it's it's like how to it's like how to balance it man um so i think it's it's good it's it's not like a thing you beat yourself up for but it's again that awareness is key. It's it's like a win. Every time you're aware of it, it's a win. Don't look at it as like good or bad. Yeah. Just like, just take it as it is, you know, take it in stride. Yeah. I, um, I noticed that. Sorry to interrupt you. No, I, no, I you're noticed good. I was the done. phone thing big. So the, we had a little storm here last night. The power went out at my house. <laughs> oh. And so I wake up this morning and my phone was on the charger, but had 
died amidst the power going out. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm doing my thing and getting ready to go to my workout. And the amount of times, like, I just pulled it just to see what time it was. Yeah. You know, like, pull, or even just, like, not even my phone, just looking at the clock, you know, on the on the stove that isn't working. And I just realized like this morning and I was like, Ooh, this is kind of a cool thing to talk. It's like how controlled kind of we are by time. Yeah. And you know, in a grand scheme of things in my little like spiritual journey over the last year, I feel I've felt that I've learned that like the timing's always right. Mm. And so I try and not trip out over time. Like even, even if I'm de- late delivering a pizza in like my mind in what I've kind of tried to come to accept is like it is as it should be and the timing's always right and so for whatever reason this person's getting their pepperoni five minutes late you know like it's all part of the the (laughs) the plan you know and so i like that um and so like that helps but i don't like being late either and so like it causes some inner (laughs) anxiety when you're like starting to be late and you're like oh no it's it's for a reason you know but um that's been like one thing with time. And I just noticed that with the phone, just looking at my phone and it you not being know. dead or looking at the clock, like we're so consumed by time. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of not real. <laughs> that's, that's that's like super interesting you bring that up because right before this, you know, I'll have, I have very vivid dreams. Okay. Like I'll tune in very deeply in my dreams. I just try not to overthink like what they mean. Yeah. Um, but like when I pick up an insight on Instagram maybe, or like when I read like a, a very insightful book, there will always be something like right before bed, there will always be something that I tune into during my dreams. Ah. And, and like I, so going to the to, the topic of, of time, um, when I was at APU, I would, you know, I'd get worked up a little anxious before games or like the night before. And it happened to me like three times where I would see vividly like either the stat sheet or a shot in the game. And I knew it was going to happen. Dang. Like I'd be warming up. Like I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. And I kid you not, on my life, two times I'd go up for the shot. I'd say it out loud, like this is from my dream, and it's going in. Like it, it same spot, same person in front of me, same time in the game, and it. So that kind of opened me up to like, bro, time is not linear. If I can right. see something right. happening before it happens, you know, there's got to be some relationship to that. And right before you came here, I saw a post. Uh, I think his name's Parker. Shout out to Parker, <laughs> the, my guy. Uh, he posted something from Carl Jung, like we're we're tapped, we're way too uh, attached to time. Ah. And so, it, how do you how do you think that affects flow for you if if you are attached to time, like Ooh. oh something's got a deadline, it's got to occur by this time. Yeah, dude, th- that's a weird one because yeah, like on one end of the spectrum, like I think having deadlines and like. Yeah. You know, I'm a kind of a procrastinator at times, but and like giving myself like, all right, it has to be done by right. this time. Yeah. Like helps me be more productive yeah. at times. But then in the same sense, like not not being know, attached to it. Not being attached yeah. to the timing of it. You know, it's like it's that's a totally weird yeah. balance that man, I don't know if I have an answer to. Um it's yeah, I don't shoot. I don't know. Well, man. like a very simple tool that I learned my last year or two years ago was like, okay, I have a deadline. You know, each week I try to throw out a podcast. Right. And I try to remain free from that deadline, even though I, like I have the deadline. Yeah. I know I want to be consistent with that. But setting aside times where I'm like, okay, you get to edit here. Don't worry about anything else during those times. And when you're not editing, don't worry about the times you're going to edit. You know what I mean? (laughs) Because I I feel like that's where we get taken out is like, okay, shit, I got to, I got to edit, man. That's always weighing on me. And that kind of goes back to that, that topic I discussed about, I feel like the school system wanted us to be that way for sure in a certain way, like wanted us to be attached to like, okay, shit, I can't do this. I got school tomorrow. I got this. Like I got to do this. It keeps you in that that next thing. Right. It keeps you in that loop of, oh, I have this schedule. So I don't know. I mean, it's something to definitely toy around with and see, you know, how does time affect you in day-to-day life? Yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, obviously like in our society, we need clocks and we need, you know, like we need it, but in the same breath, like we put a lot of value on it and like, you know, I don't, 
And to me, this is kind of same topics, kind of not. It's like I'm always just really amazed at people's like, in nowadays in society, like people are in such a hurry to do nothing. Hurry to go nowhere, yeah. Dude, Rush to nowhere, bro. Like drive. Like I used to, you know, when I was first got my license and all that. Like I'm driving fast yeah. and like in a hurry all the time yeah. for whatever. But now, like I just don't. Like, like you know, I'm back to like, well, when I if I get there at four twenty eight or 436 yeah either one's cool you know like yeah. i'm not gonna and but then i really notice it like while i'm driving is you know people cut you off to like get in front of you at a yeah, red yeah. light that we're gonna go <laughs> successively for five or six more <laughs> red lights like bro, why are you so worried about yeah. you know like for me it's like i don't know i gotta unless you gotta poop or you're gonna <laughs> deliver a kid you know like you don't need to be in or a hurry pizza. yeah or pe- <laughs> even then i'm chilling bro like honestly tips are better sometimes when you're late because i get to apologize and then they feel bad for you you get on the knees like (laughs) i'm sorry (laughs) no that's that's a deep one bro because i remember vividly this in the complex that i live in it's like this uh bunch of little kids that play cricket okay oh sick. and they love they think i'm like the the god of cricket and i sucked at baseball but though they're so little they when i hit it in the air they're like oh <laughs> this guy's a legend so every time i pull up they're like yo will like hit the ball for us hit the ball for us <laughs> and so i i'm like sometimes i'll be tugged by like oh no i gotta go inside but then one time i was like why like yeah. what am i getting pulled in by yeah but i feel like i'm in that a lot and yeah. a lot of it is due to my phone like okay i gotta check this for what yeah like what do you I gotta message somebody or yeah or something it, there was like a cool picture i saw online it was like most of the time it used to be you'd get offline and be like gotta go or you're on instant messenger like i'm i'm getting offline yeah, yeah now yeah. it's like we're always online. yeah or yeah it was i i know exactly it was something like <laughs> you might you have know, posted we, it I, I think maybe i did yeah <laughs> it was it was like we used to say like brb yeah you i know you like on that, aim dude. or That's you know hilarious. whatever like we used to say brb <laughs> yeah now we're always here. We're just on. We're it. always there, and that's the same. Like, yeah, I you think know, you for sure posted that. I think, yeah. Now that I, <laughs> I am, I'm like, that does sound this familiar. Guy's yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it was something like, yeah, we used to have BRB, and we don't have that. We anymore. don't have BRB. We're always there. We're on. Yeah, we're on, and and you know, I'm, I'm like talking down to it a little bit, but uh, shit, I'm guilty of it as oh, anybody, dude. you know, and and I. Uh, and then it'll like bug me. I have a couple buddies who actually are pretty good at like, yeah. I don't know if it's tuning out or ignoring, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, but, and then I'll get frustrated sometimes, you know, if I'm not getting a response in the time that I deem yeah. acceptable, you know, yeah. and, and when in reality, it's like before, like we're sending just emails or letter, you know, like yeah. the, the progress of time and like yeah. everything's so quick now has mm-hmm. just changed. Like everything i mean and you can relate it to like nobody wants to like put in the time to get good at something yeah that's deep bro you know we're all just and and there's multiple things for it with the kind of instagram highlight society or whatever where like you only see whoever lebron whoever yeah dominating you know you didn't see you didn't see the grind Hmm. you know you didn't see the countless countless hours of work and probably tears and frustration that like led to that point you know we don't get to see that and so like you know everyone just wants to be good now and and for the most part you know bro you used to have to wait a week to get something in the mail yeah amazon prime now if you're in seattle you can get that in three hours yeah Yeah. yeah no that's that's insane bro i um I, I kind of allude that to my meditation practice. Like when I first started, I wanted to be at the level I was in basketball, like right uh, away. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I need to be this good versus like, oh, no, take the time. Like if you would have just stuck with the process for as long as I've done it, I'd be probably, you know, way ahead of where I'm at now. Right, but right. But because we want that instant gratification, it gets we get lost in that mix. It takes a lot longer to, you know, get to where we actually want to be. For sure. We got to do the research. Like if you go on social media, you got to know like these guys have put in the work or, you know, wherever they're at, Dude, you yeah. know, there's, there's hours and hours of work that go behind just them doing what they're doing online. Yeah. So it is, it is dangerous, bro. Comparison yeah. really is like a thief of joy in that way. Dude, it is. And, and, but naturally I think we are like 
as humans we want to compare yeah you know like that's part of our dna yeah. you know i don't actually i don't know scientifically or anything but yeah. i feel like it's part of our dna to like be somewhat comparative you know For we're sure. communal and comparative like they kind of go hand to hand yeah you know and but no the i mean my thing this year and i haven't been successful at it is just being consistent yeah like i struggle with consistency and so whether it be you know meditate meditating or i've been getting into doing handstands lately is like one of my like off right you know kind of a workout but more of a fun workout kind of thing yeah and like i mean shit i haven't done them in a while but for like maybe a month straight i'd do at least just a minute a day of handstands and by that end of the month like Mm killing handstands that's awesome but then if i only go maybe do 15 minutes but once a week on that one you know i really go hard for one day a week like Mm -hmm. i get way better at the small little yeah you know a minute a day for 30 days rather than 15 minutes a week you know you compare i'm only doing seven minutes a week when it's a minute a day Mm -hmm. another one i'm doing 15 minutes in a week but I'm getting more from the seven minutes because it's every day rather yeah. than the 15 minutes because it's once a week. Yeah. And so I don't know how that just relates, but no, it <laughs> that does. was on I my mean, mind. Everything, dude. Like, yeah. it's just, it's all about that consistent practice. Like, you're not, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You know, everything we're talking about. Yeah. Like mental health. Yeah. Sports. Like, it's all part of it. Yeah. Like that's. Learn to enjoy it. Yeah. That's my thing, too, is like, I like to write and I like to journal, mm. but I only ever do it when I'm struggling. Yeah, that's very deep because you know? I, I really do a lot of my research when I'm not feeling it. I'm when I'm not in a good space. For sure, yeah. So it's like how bad does it have to get? Yeah, and and so it's like <laughs> yeah, to cheap, like clue, like I've tried to be like, all right, I'm feeling good. Like write yeah. it down. So, you that's know, very, because then like because yeah. if I go back and like I'll read like my journal stuff and I don't do it, like I said, I only do it when I'm feeling bad normally. Yeah. And but it's fun to see those insights, you know, a year, a month two years however far away but i was like dang it'd be nice to like <laughs> read some good read thoughts good too. <laughs> you know, like, yeah no that's, that's <laughs> but that's we only you only do it yeah, because like, like oh, i'm trying to fix myself I'm not like feeling? to go yeah. back to what you is like i view it as like this is a step to yeah being better or you know and and yeah and so. I definitely have countless notebooks of me not feeling great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like right. me trying to figure something out. That's that's a deep insight. And, and that's something that I've really learned from Dr. Bob, who oh, okay. I got to link you with, bro. Yeah, dude, I, he, I, um, I, I got it. Deep, deep cat. He um, he would always tell me like after the sessions, like, all right, don't don't go just use your energy. like Be nourished by it. And that's what I meant by the Qi Gong. It's like, okay, you feel good. Let's try to nourish yourself and maintain it. Like for me, like I'll get into a great flow. Yeah. And then obviously some, I got to do something to mess it up. Right. Like I got to, I got to learn how to get back to it again. No. Like, why can't we just stay there? Mm-hmm. I think it's like our hab, uh, our nature to want to feel comfortable and you know, where we're at, how we feel for sure. So it's like, okay, we tap into flow. We tap into like a very good state, nourish yourself with it. Don't try to release it, but that's a very, I will apply that. Like if I'm feeling good, go write it down. Even if it's two sentences. Feel great. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's, no, that's, hey, that's I feel a, great. This is what I did. That's deep, you man. know, like, I, and I'm t- telling myself as much as you no, know. No, like, I'm, I'm definitely, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit that, bro. I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna try. It. You know, I'm feeling good. Like, enjoy this, man. Like, yeah. You, you've, you've tried very hard to tap into this. Don't try to get rid of it so fast. For sure. So that's a, that's a very deep insight, and we just went off on uh, all of this. Let's see. Good. Yeah, bro. Um, that. yeah, like, <laughs> shit, man. So. I guess how what have you seen in terms of like this practice, this spiritual and mental like awareness? How have you seen it translate into your your football game, and also maybe just you as a human being, like how you interact with people? Yeah, well, this is gonna be a weird answer, I guess. Um, like, I feel like in a way, the more spiritual that I'm becoming, in a way, like football's becoming less of a thing. Just because, like, I mean, it's it's my love and it's a passion of mine, no doubt. But I'm realizing that there's just more, yeah. You know, and and to, you know, kind of confine yourself in like a box can be mm. not beneficial. Yeah. And um, and so like I'm interested, and in, I don't, I can't fully answer that question because I haven't 
played in a game now since a lot of these realizations have happened. Oh, like, cool. cause I, yeah. I left Finland before the season started this year. Oh, um, okay. and so I didn't end up playing 2019. And so in the past playing, like people will say like, I'm a completely different person on and off the field, you know, always very like happy go lucky, like want to be friends with everyone and are not friends, but get along with everyone and then on the field, like, I don't get, like, I'm there to win. And, like, I'll say whatever, do you know, like, obviously n- nothing cheap or, you know, but, like, winning is goal number one where, like, I am cool with being an asshole, you know, yeah. like, almost relish in it a little bit. Yeah. And so I'm kind of wondering to see if that will continue mm. because it's, like, some stuff, you know, that I've probably done or said, like, on the field, like, I'm not super proud of, it, you know, reflecting on it nothing crazy but just like being a dick basically you know and I'm wondering if now like if I'll have a little bit less of that but then I also wonder because I think sometimes like part of the flow state in games is like that Kobe Jordan asshole like that gets you in the zone you know and Adds so a little bit of risk. It's like, oh, fuck, I'm talking shit. I got to back it up. Totally, <laughs> dude. Yeah, totally. And so I'm kind of wondering if, like, by me getting a little bit away from that, if, you know, I, I'll i lose a little bit of an edge or possibly gain, you know, because I know it sometimes probably you get past that limit and then you're just playing mad. Yeah. And then you're out of the flow completely. Right, right. But if you're too nice, then it's that you know it's finding that balance point. And so I'm I'm very curious to see like moving forward how I'll maneuver that you know because yeah. like I said I haven't now I haven't played a a, a real game and last game was Poland in 2018 like July gotcha. 2018 so yeah I'm going on like a year plus year and a half before mm. of in between and so. Um, yeah, I, but I've realized like throughout this, and I don't know if it's just growing older and finding some other hobbies, and but like football is still like the love, but it's not like do or die like it That's used cool. to be when yeah. I was like 20, you know, or like, you know, that was the only thing I felt like I used to have. And now I feel like I'm slowly kind of not losing it, but gaining other things. And so, like, by gaining other things, like, desires and cares have to be, you know, distributed a little bit more evenly. Yeah. And so it used to probably be, like, all the eggs in the football basket, and now a few of them are scattered around to some other things, you know. And and so I think that's a good thing, like, overall. Um, And I think – I think it – I think it can help for playing, you know. I think – I'll still probably be an asshole on game day, you know, like to an extent, but maybe with a little more conscious, like understanding behind it. It doesn't go to that line where it takes you out. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. Because like I've always, for whatever reason, like I normally, I've I've realized this as I'm saying it, I almost play better mad, you Mm. know, like whether it's someone on another team, a ref, you know, like playing in, you know, some coaches you play for them, some you play in spite of. You know, whatever it may be, like, sometimes I think I play better mad. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if... Well, I mean, like like we said, everyone's unique. So, like, for me, I don't play that well mad. You know, I I play better when I'm, like, very grateful Uh, and grounded in that. You know what I mean? But, again, everyone's unique. So it's, like, that's why, you know, the goal of this podcast is to shed light on that. Like, your flow is completely different than mine, and yeah. that's okay. Like, you're still in flow. Right. You can still tap into that state. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it'll be very interesting to hear. Like, yeah, as, we'll as have you, to do a part yeah, two. Yeah, part yeah, two. Yeah, yo, exactly. yo, I'm in Europe. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's sick, man. And then, obviously, like, you're, you're starting the um, your podcast. Yeah. And you're starting – I mean, you do vlogs and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what is just – you know, as we wrap this up, kind of what is your purpose with that and and what do you hope to shed light on? Yeah. So I appreciate you asking that. Um, yeah, mine, mine's called living for a living podcast. It's, you know, my handle and the title of the vlog and everything. And, you know, it, it essentially like very similar to you in the sense of like, 
I think now's a time where it's like okay to kind of talk about mental health and talk about life in like a unfiltered way you know Mm -hmm. meaning talking about the bad things and good but you know and so like kind of just drawing on the living for a living theme like just talking about life you know whether it be the the ups and the downs you know the positives negatives the goods that you know I guess those are all kind of the same things in a way but you know just reflecting on it and then you know thinking in my mind like you know a few of the podcasts I listen to have helped kind of get through things or make Mm -hmm. you just at least think of another way and I really enjoy this podcast format where we're able to have a uninterrupted conversation for an hour or two and so kind of just combining all those things of enjoying the conversation wanting to learn more about other people yeah uh if it can provide value to somebody else you know like if we can nail all those heads like that's perfect and um so yeah, it's I, I don't really have like a specific like topic yeah. in mind, you know, but just to you know kind of get everyone's story that comes, you know, use people I think that are interesting, get their story, and then just kind of dive how we're doing, you know. Yeah. Well, when you were going through this, what were you thinking, and what brought you out of that, and or when it was going really good, were you really doing as good as you, you know, those mm-hmm. kind of things, and and. I think, uh, you know, there's times when I'm traveling and I'll meet a random person. I'm a big proponent of like talking to strangers randomly and we'll get into a conversation for hour or two. And I'm like, dang, like if anything, like my mom would want to hear about this conversation or hear, you know, or then same the homies would whoever, you know, whoever would that like, dang, it'd be cool to just be able to pot you know kind of have something a platform where i could do that actually and so that's kind of like one of the segments i have in mind where um kind of called i haven't gotten to it yet because it hasn't happened but (laughs) don't talk to strangers where i have someone on that's That's basically like a relative stranger you know that that came from like just a random conversation (laughs) that we be you know maybe we're homies now or like friends now but it started because of a random Dude, conversation at the awesome. coffee shop you know and because that is awesome. we're taught yeah going back to the education yeah. system and you're constantly taught don't talk to strangers yeah. don't do this click. don't do da, 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 yeah. da. now we get in ubers we date online and all we're doing is revolving around strangers yeah. you know and so like that's my kind of that bro and so that's that, gonna take off yeah sure. so that's balance i'm always in in my mind of like one i'm doing it for myself so yeah. like when i'm 50 like being able to look back on it will be really cool yeah and then but naturally when you kind of put stuff on youtube and you can get a views number or a subscribe you like you also want to be successful you know like you judge success off of that and so like yeah i'd like it to get popular as well you know if i could eventually use that to become something but um yeah for right now it's just kind of fun a hobby and we'll see kind of where it goes but i think the stuff will be unique, you know, yeah. at the very least, awesome. you know, that's, that's what I, I hope, you know? Yeah. Well, I hope we can continue to collaborate, bro. It's, yeah, bro. it's been fun. I know, um, man. I, I, yeah. I'm like I said, bro, I'm super stoked. You had me on. And, yeah, and of course, man. Because I mean, didn't have to. And, oh, and, no, and, no, it's uh, great, bro. it's just, it's cool to connect and like this whole podcast yeah, style or, you know, whatever culture, I guess you could call it is like, think one of the next things yeah you know, and and not like i really care about being the next whatever but i think so, a lot of benefits are going to come from the podcast you know for sure bro and love what you're doing man yeah obviously. thank you and so, so joey bradley living for a living my god on every social uh yeah let's see i know what on youtube on? right yeah youtube living for a living instagram living for a living twitter i don't even really just not living on yeah i'm not living for, I'm, I'm just j brad i think on twitter <laughs> uh, i can't follow that yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i really appreciate you coming on bro hey bro it's it's a great a, conversation appreciation's mutual bro. appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> thank you guys for tuning into the flow station podcast if you enjoyed it please rate it share with your friends and uh, follow us on instagram at flow station podcast or twitter at the flow station um, more content on the way more guests and uh, more flowing to do appreciate you guys have a good one